So welcome everybody back to the second part of the lecture. In this lecture, we will talk briefly about baseband pulse transmission. In this subject, the following topics are going to be covered. Mostly we will talk about first the match filter, which is very important concept. You need to understand why do we use it and what's the importance of it. Calculation and how to find it mathematically also. Calculation of the bit error rate due to the presence of channel noise. And if time permits, we can study the error over fading practical wireless channel. Understand the phenomenon of inter-symbol interference, why it happens and how to overcome it. Nyquist criteria for distortionless baseband data transmission. And there is Nyquist transmission and there is sub-Nyquist and non-Nyquist transmission. We need to understand both. And uh, study also correlative level coding, which is a technique used to overcome inter-symbol interference. Beside, we will also go over channel equalization, the I pattern, constellation diagram, polar diagram of practical communication systems. So when digital data is usually transmitted through the communication channel, there will be disturbance by two different noise types when you transmit your data. First, you will have inter-symbol interference due to two reasons. Due to the filter design at the transmitter or due to the channel at the receiver. So when you transmit your signal, this is your signal, let's say, and you have here filter at the transmitter. When it passes your signal, the filter, it might the filter might cause inter-symbol interference, and also you have the channel, the wireless channel here. It, the channel itself, if it has reflections from different directions, reaching the receiver at different delays, then it might cause inter-symbol interference. You need to handle this at the receiver side. And also, when your signal reaches the receiver, there is an automatic added additive white Gaussian noise that you cannot escape from it. You must encounter it. So these are the two basic uh, impairments, we can say, impediments that you might encounter when you transmit your signal over a channel. So the matched filter, which is the basic concept I want you to understand and learn, is basically the first element in the baseband receiver. The, after you receive your signal and get it from the antenna and from the RF uh, front end and go to the baseband, you will have a receiver. We call it matched filter. This, the matched filter, is the linear time invariant system. Time invariant means doesn't vary with time, and linear, uh, you can represent it by summation, summation of weights multiplied by the signal. Used to maximize the signal to noise energy of the received signal sample. This is why we use match filter. The match filter is used in your communication system design in order to increase the energy of your signal with respect to the noise. If you increase the energy of your signal, to, the detection process will become easier and you will end up getting less errors. So this is basically your signal reaches your receiver, an additive white Gaussian noise called W of T added to your signal, and then you have X of T. This you pass X of T to linear time invariant filter, we call it match filter, and then after that you sample at the peaks of the match filter. For example, suppose your output signal is like this, you take the value of the signal at the peak here, at the peak, at T equal T naught, you sample and take your symbol. The impulse response of the match filter is a time reversed and delayed version of the input signal. Suppose your input signal is like this, like this. Yes? Your match filter will be the reciprocal, the reflection on the y-axis. Not x-axis, y-axis. So the reflection on y-axis will be this. A plus, you shift it. You shift it by t. It comes here, over this. 
So this is basically match filter. We will, by examples, we will understand it much better. So you have a, the optimal filter is written in terms of the transmit filter. G of minus T, this minus reflects it over Y axis. Yes? And then you shift it by T and you multiply it by a certain coefficient. This means that the filter is matched to the input signal. The maximum peak pulse signal to noise ratio at the sampling instant T equal TB is equal to 2EP over a naught, where EP is the energy per bit, and naught is the Bohr spectral density of the noise, and 2 is actually coming from a naught over 2. So, let's understand this concept by simple examples. Example 1. Consider the rectangular pulse G of T shown below. This is the pulse, yes? It has amplitude of A and duration of T. If I tell you find the energy, how do you find the energy? Amplitude square multiplied by time. Power multiplied by... Yes? Is that right? Find the matched filter output of this signal. This is G of T at the transmitter. You want to find the pulse that must be used at the receiver so that you maximize your signal to noise ratio. What we said, we said that filter should be the matched filter, reversed version of the original signal at the transmitter plus delay. So this is the signal. The, the match filter, find the match filter output. He's not saying the match filter itself. The match filter is basically, mathematically, G tau minus T. Yes? Can you please write this, the match filter? How, how does it appear? Minus G minus T becomes this. Yes? Is that right? G minus T plus T shift here actually now someone will tell me it's plus t and shift it to the left how come it's not plus it's actually minus because how do you write this this is equal to g minus t minus tau is that right t minus t capital shifts to the left yes and minus reflects. This is how it is. Why? So what do you have now? You have the transmit, the transmit signal, which is in black, drawn in black. You, you cancel this now after the shift. You don't have the signal. You have the signal here. And you have the matched filter, which is exactly coming on top of the original one. When you, all, when you convolve them, do convolution. What, what's when I say that this signal passed through matched filter? When any signal passed through a filter, a block, you convolve with that block. G of x, x of t multiple convolved with convolved with what? With g of x. Convolution. Everybody knows convolution from the previous courses in signal and system. When you, you the convolution is like. Summation and multiplication. At each point, you sum, you shift and sum. You shift and sum. Yes, this is what's convolution. Like you have two signals like this. You reflect this like this and shift and multiply uh, and sum. Shift and sum. Shift. And... So what would be the result of this convolution? This. The convolution of two rectangular pulses gives you a triangular pulse. And at where do you have the largest value? When they are on top of each other. When they become on top of each other, at, ta, at t equal tau, capital, because that's the point where they are matching. And at this point, what's the maximum value? The maximum value is actually this area. Why is this area? Anybody knows why it's this area? Because at that point, they are on top of each other. You, you, you sum, 
and find the result. When you sum all these values, what's the summation? It's the area. What's the area? It's the integration. The integration is the summation. So you calculate this, and the area here is, becomes the peak after the convolution. Yes, k a squared multiplied by t, because the match filter has the value of k. If k equal 1, then it becomes a squared t. The big value of g0 of t can be obtained. There is another way of finding the big value of g0 of t. It can be obtained by uh, when t equal tau, which can be obtained by passing the rectangular pulse through an integrator, then sample the, integ the integrator output at t equal tau. Then it, there is, it says that there is another way of finding the peak. How do you find the peak of your output signal? after match filter, you integrate your uh, signal, G, uh, your g of t. You integrate it. The signal was constant, rect. Uh, yes? After you integrate it, it becomes linear. And what, what's this? This is the value, A, the integration. The integration of A, A, t. And since it's limited between 0 and tau, becomes a tau the maximum. Yes, integrator, and then sample at, the, at t equal tau. You get the same as convolving with the received message. This is another way of finding the peak. Another example to understand this. The example says, consider you have a signal s of t shown in the below figure, in the figure below. The, the question asks, determine the impulse response of a filter matched to this signal. The impulse response of a filter matched to this signal. Do you understand it? This is S of T, the signal. You want to find G of T, which is the match filter, and he's asking you, what's the response, the impulse response of a filter match to this signal and sketch it as a function of time. So this is the signal. What's the, the impulse response of a mass filter? It's S of tau minus T, yes? You reflect this over the y-axis and shift by T. You get what? You get this shape. So this is the impulse response of the mass filter. What's the, the output of this matched filter? The convolution of this with this. The convolution. The convolution you need to flip this on the y-axis and shift it little by little. When, do you, when will you get the maximum value? Well, they are on top of each other at t equal tau. At t equal tau, you get the peak. The convolution of these two functions give you, this is the result. This is the result that you will obtain. What's the peak value? The peak value is actually the area under this. A squared tau over 4. What's the power of this? A squared over 4. Yes, multiplied by tau area. Because when you have power, you don't have negative. This becomes, this becomes positive. And this is amplitude. The power is square of it if you have one ohm resistor. And the energy is the power multiplied by the duration of the time. And this energy becomes the peak value of your, of the output of the match filter. Great. Clear, understood. This is basically what match filter is. Now, what do you do? Here, at this time, you take your data. Your, at this point of time, your data has maximum energy. If your noise is this, and you take this at this point, there is difference between the noise level and the value at which you take your data. So you have protection, you have less error. But if you sample here, what would be the level of the signal? The level of the noise. 
So you cannot distinguish the signal from the noise, and that's why you will have errors. That's where you can see the importance of matched filter. With this, I conclude my lecture and finish the basic concept of matched filter, and we continue next lecture. Thank you.